Hello everyone, my name is Jen, and this is a 30 minute practice dedicated to the waxing crescent moon phase. Waxing means to grow, and this particular phase is about growing your intention that you set on the initial new moon phase. So to access the new moon flow, there is a link below in the information section about this video. You can use that link to access the previous new moon practice. So the new moon practice had sort of this energy around the salutations, like a building energy, as well as a clearing energy so that an intention could surface and come through. And this particular phase, the waxing crescent phase, is considered to be the more yin uh, complementary part that balances out the yang intention setting of the new moon. So where the new moon is about doing or creating, this particular phase is about being and allowing. The waxing crescent phase also carries with it this sense of receptivity or receiving. So you'll notice that this practice is a little bit slower than the initial new moon practice. We'll start standing, we'll do a few standing poses, and then we'll take the energy down by coming into some slower, longer held poses that are close to the earth. Work at your level, come out of poses early if needed, and we'll begin standing. Namaste. We're beginning today's practice standing at the front short side of the mat. If you want to have a blanket for low lunge pose, you can lay that across the center of the mat. And if you think you might want to use blocks for our practice today, I'm going to offer a low lunge variation with blocks. You can set those like to the front, but just out to the sides. You're going to take your feet about frontal hip bone distance apart. You're going to place your hands at your heart center in prayer. Allow your eyes to find a gazing point to steady the gaze of your eyes, but also to harness the attention and the awareness of your mind. As you settle the gaze, begin to bring your awareness to the inhalation and the exhalation. Feeling a deepening of both the breath in and the breath out at the back of your throat. The breath creating a very soft and audible sound. One last inhale and exhale here. Take a breath in, begin to circle sweep your arms down, out to the sides and up and along the sides of your face. Right hand catches hold of your left wrist. We're gonna exhale, lean the body to the right in a variation of a side stretch. As you take your next breath in, let your body come back up to the center. Fingertips stretching high, exhale left hand to right wrist and exhale, gently lean the body to the left. As you're inhaling, come up through the center, take the tailbone down, feel a light lift of the heart spread through the fingers, prayer hands coming together, bend your knees and hinge your body forward out over your legs, forward bend. As you inhale, let your hands slide up on your shins as you lift your belly away from your thighs. So feel your shins press into your hands as you reach the crown of the head forward. And then as you're exhaling, let your body fold in towards your legs. Breathe in, let your knees bend. Begin to reach out through the crown of your head. Big circle sweep of your arms. Rise up. At the top, we're going to take the right hand to the left wrist and exhale, gently tip the body to the right. 
Let your inhalation bring your body back through the center. You're gonna take your left hand to your right wrist. And as you exhale, tip your body down to the left. Breathing in, come back to the center. Reach up through your fingers as your tailbone gently draws down. Prayer hands coming through the heart. Bend the knees and hinge your torso forward over your legs. As you breathe in, slide your hands up onto your shins. Lift your belly away from your thighs and reach out long through the crown of your head. As you're taking your exhale, you're going to let your knees bend. Lightly touch the floor with your hands and step your right foot back. I'm going to take the right knee and lower the right knee down into low lunge. You're going to slide the hands up onto the front left thigh. So here's where you may end up wanting to use your blocks. So I like to have the blocks so that they're flat to the floor. So if the blanket's wide enough across that you can get a good stable space, otherwise maybe just a little bit wider so that the blocks feel flat and they feel stable that you're able to reach them in a moment as we do some side bends. So stabilizing your legs heel here, draw your front heel and back knee toward one another. Tailbone is gonna draw down. You're gonna stretch your arms up and along the sides of your face. So you really wanna focus on drawing the belly button in. You're gonna take your breath in and as you exhale, you're gonna find the block for your right hand. And you're just gonna lean your body over to the right. Stabilize down through your legs and your feet and then let your breath in. Bring your body back up to the center. Stretch up through your palms and fingers and as you exhale, left hand is gonna come down. So you do want the block a little bit away from the body so that you have some space for your body to tip over to the side. And then take your breath in, let your body come back up through the center and as you're exhaling, let your hands come down to frame your front foot. Lift your back right knee away from the floor. Press off the right foot and step the right foot forward. Just slide your hands up on your shins. Lift your belly and reach out through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, we're going to take the left foot, step the left foot back, and lightly lower the knee down to the mat. So you can slide your hands up onto your front right thigh. Feel your right heel and your left knee kind of draw toward one another and then feel your tailbone draw down so that you can stretch your arms up and along the sides of the face. So take a breath in here and as you exhale, you're going to let your left hand come to find the block. Just pressing straight down with the palm into the block as you lean your body lightly over. So you have to use some stabilization because the block on its highest side is a little less stable than the other two heights, right? So breathe in, let your body come back up, reach up through your fingers, and then as you exhale, let your right hand find the block, and a light tip off to the right. Take your inhale and let your body come back up into that low lunge shape, crescent moon lunge, and then as you exhale, let your hands come down, Frame the front foot, lift your back knee. So you're going to press off the back foot and then step forward. Take halfway lift with your spine. So you're going to slide your hands up onto your shins, reach out through the crown of your head. Exhale, we're going to step the right foot back again. So as the right foot comes back, lightly lower your right knee down. Slide your hands back up to your front left thigh. It's going to breathe in, stabilize through your legs and your feet, sweep your arms up by your ears. You're going to keep your arms straight, but your arms are going to come forward. So they're extending straight out from your heart. We're going to take eagle arms here. It's going to take your left arm, bring the left arm on top, and you can either wrap your arms around your chest to give yourself a hug, or you can wrap your forearms and maybe wrap your forearms and palms taking the eagle arms in the low lunge position. Noticing the opening across the mid back area and find the focal point, your eyes just gazing right at your forearms. Last exhale here. As you're breathing in, you're gonna unwind your arms, let your arms reach one more time up by the sides of the face. And as you exhale, lightly come down to frame your front foot. 
Lift your back right knee away from the floor. Press off the foot and step forward. Take a breath in, slide your hands up on your shins. Reach out long through the crown of your head. And then as you're exhaling, step your left foot back and take your left knee down, slide your hands up to your front right thigh. Draw your front heel and your back knee toward one another. Take your tailbone down and then breathe in to expand your arms out to the sides. Reach the arms up and along the sides of the face. Keeping the arms straight, but bring the arms out in front of the heart so that they parallel the floor. Right arm is going to cross on top of the left. You can wrap your arms around your heart, around your hands to opposite shoulder blade, or you can wrap your forearms, maybe wrap your hands. Notice the space between the shoulder blades, the opening across the back plane of the body as you focus at the forearms. Last exhale. Let your inhalation, that slow, steady unwind of your arms, reach your arms up by the sides of the face. And as you exhale, let your hands come down, framing your front foot, lifting up the back left knee, press off the left foot and step forward. Inhale, slide your hands up onto your shins, reach out long through the crown of your head. And then as you're exhaling, fold the body in toward the legs. As you're breathing in, allow your knees to bend. Take your arms out to the sides. Rise all the way up. Interlace your hands. Bring your hands to the back of your head. And just slightly release the head into the hands so you feel this light tip upward with your chin opening through the throat. Deep inhale. And deep exhale. We're gonna keep the hands at the back of the head, but we're gonna start to bend the knees and hinge the torso forward over the legs. So as you come down, you can kind of bring the hands around so that the heels of the hands are to the sides of the head, like right around your ears. Then you can almost feel like you're tractioning the crown of the head down toward the floor. While the bones of the buttocks feel a light lift upward. Okay, and then just let your arms just relax. Inhale, lift your spine halfway. Glide your hands up on your shins. Press your shin bones into your hands. And as you exhale, we're going to come to down dog. So let your knees bend so that your hands can lightly touch down. You're going to step your feet back into down dog. So as you arrive, just take a gentle pedaling out through your feet and your knees. As you're walking out through the legs, you can feel that gentle opening up through the backs of your ankles, through the backs of your calves. There's a sense of length out through your spine and out through the crown of your head. All right, take a breath in. And then as you're exhaling, let your knees just come lightly down into tabletop pose. So in the tabletop pose, you can shift your blocks forward so that they're out of your way. We're gonna ground down into the right knee and extend the left leg out to the side. So we create the gate legs. You might walk your hands an inch or two farther forward. So the moon is associated with the element of water. So we're gonna begin to shift the hips back toward the heels and then forward. So see if you can create this steady rhythmic flow with your hips as your hips release toward your heel and then rise back up keep reaching somewhat long out through the crown of the head just to avoid overstraining the muscles at the back of the neck great last few times So after this next one, we're going to rock the hips up and we're going to switch out the legs. It's going to let your left knee come down and extend out through your right leg and then just that same flow. A steady rhythmic flow.
flow with the hips as they reach back toward your heel and then rising back up. Spreading through the fingers so that you feel a strong, steady foundation. And as you're rocking, you can maybe press the ball of the left foot into the floor so that when the hips reach back, you get a little opening across the sole of the foot. As you rock back up, allow your right knee to come down to the floor. We're going to take the thread the needle position. So you're going to ground into your right hand. You're going to let your hips lean a little bit to the left. So you're going to let your left hand lift. The hand can pull up to the chest. So you get this lift up through the left elbow. Keep grounding through your right hand. If it feels okay on your shoulder, you can stretch your left arm up toward the sky. And then as you exhale, you're going to let the left arm come between the right hand and the right knee. So you're going to come down onto your left arm and the left ear. And so you're going to let your hips lean a little bit to the left. So your right hand stays anchored. Your hips lean just a bit to the left. So they get an opening across the left shoulder blade and the left ribs. Feeling the points of connection that you have between your body and the earth. And feeling the rhythm of the inhalation and exhalation. Okay, take a last inhale and a last exhale. Pressing strong into your right hand so you feel your breath in. Unwind your left arm. Let your left hand come to the mat, tabletop pose. One cat cow, so inhale, let your belly tip down to the mat. Let your heart lift up. And then as you're exhaling, you're going to press into your hand. Take your tailbone under. Draw your shoulder blades apart. Bring your chin in toward your chest. Inhale as you find neutral. So let the weight come into your left hand. You're going to lift up your right hand. Slide your right hand up to your chest. And then you can stretch up through the right arm. Take a deep inhalation. And then as you're exhaling, you're going to bring your right arm between your left hand and your left knee. So you come down onto the right arm and right side of the face. Feel a little gentle pressure with your left hand as your hips gently press off to the right so you get the opening through your right ribs and then the right shoulder blade area. Taking a last slow inhale and slow exhale. And you're breathing in, pressing firm into your left hand to unwind your right hand, coming back to all fours. One cat cow, inhale, let your belly tip down toward the floor and lift up through your heart. And then as you're exhaling, pressing into your hands, take your tailbone under, draw your belly into your spine, round your back. And then as you inhale, coming to neutral. We're going to take the puppy position. And so you may want your blocks on their lowest sides, as, about as wide as your mat. So you're going to take your hands onto the blocks. You want to keep your hips over your knees, then you can slide the hands forward just a little bit so you come into like a half downward dog, also called the puppy position. So the hands are as wide as the shoulders are slightly wider. You're reaching long through the crown of the head while the hips are over the knees. Deep inhale and deep exhale. You can stay in the puppy pose or you can take the melting heart pose, which is to let the tops of the thigh bones anchor back a little bit more so that your pelvis tilts forward. So it's going to feel like you're sticking up the buttocks toward the sky and you're going to let your heart melt down toward the mat. 
and your face may come close to the floor. So just pay attention if it's too much tension in the shoulders. You can always come down, back down to your hands as well instead of the blocks. Deep inhale and a deep exhale. So you're press into the hands, start to lift the chest away from the floor. Just start to kind of inch your hands back in so that you can walk your hands back underneath of the shoulders or slightly wider. I breathe in, release your belly toward the floor. Lift up through your heart, and as you're exhaling, pressing into your hands, take your tailbone under, belly in, round through your spine. One more time, breathe in, let your belly release toward the floor, lift up through your heart, and as you're exhaling, you're going to round the back, bring the knees a little wider, bring the big toes close together, and then take your hips back toward your heels, child's pose. Let your forearms rest down and your forehead rest down so you might have to move your arms in a little bit closer to the body. Let the belly release between the inner legs. Let the points of contact that you have between your body and the earth release and relax. Deep inhalation and a deep, full, complete exhalation. Last inhale, last exhale. I'm going to rise up through all fours and bring the knees a little bit closer toward one another. We're going to swing the legs out to the side, right or left. Swing the legs out in front of you. So you can come off of the blanket so that you can move that to the side so that it's out of your way. Now you can use the blanket for supported bridge or you can catch hold of your block and you could also use a block or a bolster or a blanket for supported bridge. Okay, so you're going to slowly bring the body down onto the spine. Then as you bend your knees, you're going to place your feet flat to the floor. You're going to take the feet strong to the earth so that you can elevate your hips and slide the block, blanket, bolster, pillow, whatever you have underneath of the back of the pelvis. Right? So you wanna think about where the spine is inserting into the back of the pelvis. You might have to adjust. So adjust if um, the back feels achy in any way and if you can't find a good spot with your prop, and the prop might be too high. So if you're using a block, you could opt for a low blanket. And so the sacrum in the body is associated with the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is also associated with the element of water as well as the moon. So just allowing the low back region to release and relax. So one theory of looking at the eight phases of the moon divides them into four yin-yang pairs. So the intention setting of the new moon is considered to be like that initiation phase. So it's a yang phase. And the waxing crescent moon is said to be the yin phase. To where we take some time to rest and restore. So we live in a culture that really um, embodies the fast pace sort of go, go, go mentality. And so it's really easy to burn out, right? So these slower poses, the restful poses create that opportunity for us to just slow the physical body down, to tune into the rhythm of the breath.
take just a few more rounds of breath here. After your next inhalation and exhalation, you want to feel your feet press down so that you can elevate your hips away from your support. Sliding your support out to the side, let your hips lower down to the mat, take your arms out, wide feet, sway your knees a few times from side to side. As your knees swing over to the left, just Pause there for a moment. Feel the inner edge of your right foot. Anchor down to the floor. You can leave your left foot as is, or you can pick up the left foot and cross the left ankle over the right thigh to feel a little bit of an extra opening through the right hip and right thigh. Release your left foot. Let your knees come back up through the center. Lower your knees to the right. Same option here. Give a little press through the inner left edge of the foot. Maybe pick up your right foot and cross your right foot over the left thigh. A last deep inhalation and exhalation. Releasing the right foot to the mat, bringing the knees back to the center and the feet a little closer together. So you can pick up your right foot, hug your right thigh into your right ribs, maybe send the left leg out along the floor. So as you take this half knee to chest, you'll notice as you draw the thigh in, you can go a little more to the outer ribs. Feel your right hip just lift up a little higher than the left. Then allow your left knee to bend. Release your hands. Release your right foot. Lift up your left foot. Hug your thigh in. You can stay here. You can take your right leg and slowly extend the leg out. So the left thigh can go a little more to the outer left ribs. Left hip crest is hiked up a little higher than the right. Bend your right knee, place your right foot flat, release your hands, release your left foot down. You're going to take both legs out along the mat. You can stretch both your arms by your ears for a moment, just a gentle full body stretch. Let the arms come down by the sides. Let your heels widen up just a bit. Let your toes fall open to the sides. And then let your eyes softly close. Palms facing upward toward the sky. So one quality of the yin energy is receptivity. So we think of palms open up to opening up to the sky as a gesture of openness, and receptivity. Weight of your body releasing down.
allowing your body to remain relaxed to the earth. Taking one more inhale and exhale. Allowing your knees to bend one at a time. Place your feet flat to the floor. We'll roll the body over to the right or to the left. Pressing your hands down into the floor. Let your body start to slowly rise up. Bringing your hands together at your heart center in prayer, sitting tall. The light within me sees and bows to that same light that exists within you. Namaste.